here to explain the basic export documents required for international shipping. It's not the most glamorous aspect of exporting, but it's one of the most important. Do it incorrectly and your goods won't be delivered and you won't get paid. Before we dive into the 11 documents required for exporting, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single one of our videos sharing practical advice for exporters and importers. You want to be a successful exporter, and part of that is understanding how to use the following 11 shipping documents, all of which are available to download free in PDF form on our website. You received an inquiry about one of your products from an international prospect. The potential buyer requests a quotation. This is where the pro forma invoice comes in not the standard quotation form you've been using for domestic sales. International prospects require a pro forma invoice so they can arrange for financing, open a letter of credit, apply for the proper import licenses and more. And make sure you set a time frame for your quote. If you complete your pro forma invoice correctly, it will look a lot like a commercial invoice, which leads us to document number two. The commercial invoice is one of the most important documents that will accompany your goods during shipping and should include details of the entire export transaction from start to finish. It should include more details than the pro forma invoice. Think order number, purchase order number, or some other customer reference number, banking and payment information, and marine insurance information. It's important to note that a commercial invoice is not the same as the invoices you create from your company's accounting or ERP system. The packing list identifies the items in your shipment and includes the net and gross weight and dimensions of the packages in both US imperial and metric measurements. It identifies any markings that appear on the packages and any special instructions required for safe delivery. If cargo is lost or damaged, or there's a disagreement about the weight or measurement of the goods, you'll need the packing list. In fact, it's required to file an insurance claim. A certificate of origin identifies what country goods originated in. It usually needs to be signed by some semi-official organization, like a chamber of commerce or a country's consulate office. You might need a certificate of origin even if you've included the country of origin information on your commercial invoice. The old way of getting a certificate of origin involved exporters manually creating and delivering the document to a chamber or relying on expensive courier services to help with the time-consuming process. Today, more companies rely on electronic certificates of origin. They're quicker and easier. You can register to create an ECO on the Shipping Solutions website. In addition to generic Certificate of Origin forms, there are country-specific certificates to go along with some of the 14 free trade agreements the U.S. has in place with 20 different countries. A Certificate of Free Sale is used when you are registering a new product in a country. It tells the Customs Authority that, in the country of manufacture, the product is approved by regulatory authorities and legal to sell. It's sometimes referred to as a certificate for export or certificate to foreign governments. Whether you hire a freight forwarder or, in the case of a routed export transaction, the buyer hires a freight forwarder, it's important to provide a shipper's letter of instruction with all the information needed to successfully move your goods. It's like the cover memo for your other export paperwork. The SLI may include a limited power of attorney, allowing a forwarder to act on your behalf for the shipment. It may also grant permission to file export information through AES on your behalf. An inland bill of lading is a contract of carriage between the exporter and the shipper of the goods that states where the goods are going. It also serves as your receipt that the goods have been picked up. It can be prepared by the inland carrier or you can create it yourself. In an international shipment, the inland bill of lading is typically consigned to the carrier moving the goods internationally or, if not directly to the carrier, to a forwarder, warehouse, or some other third party who will consign your goods to the carrier when ready. 
If your goods are shipped by ocean vessel, you'll need an ocean bill of lading. It can serve as both a contract of carriage and a document of title for the cargo. There are two types. A straight bill of lading is consigned to a specific consignee and is not negotiable. The consignee takes possession of the goods by presenting a signed original bill of lading to the carrier. A negotiable bill of lading is consigned to order or to order of shipper and is signed by the shipper and sent to a bank in the buyer's country. The bank holds on to the original bill of lading until the requirements of a documentary collection or letter of credit have been satisfied. Goods shipped on a plane require an air way bill. It is a contract of carriage between the shipper and the carrier that is distributed by the International Air Transport Association. Unlike an ocean bill of lading, an air way bill cannot be negotiable. If your products are considered dangerous goods by either the International Air Transport Association or the International Maritime Organization, you'll need to include the correct dangerous goods form. Before shipping dangerous goods or hazardous materials, make sure the appropriate people at your company are trained to properly package, label, and document these shipments. The IATA form, the Shipper's Declaration for Dangerous Goods, is required for air shipments. There is a different version of this form for ocean shipments. A bank draft is for transferring control of the exported goods from the seller in exchange for funds from the buyer. Usually the seller's bank will send the bank draft and related documents via the freight forwarder to the buyer's bank or a bank it has a relationship with in the buyer's country. When the buyer authorizes payment for the goods, the buyer's bank releases the documents to the buyer and transfers the funds to the seller's bank. Well, there you go, the 11 most important documents. Below you'll find a link to our free ebook, A Beginner's Guide to Export Documents, that explains even more documents you may need and includes links to free PDFs of each document. But with these 11, you're on your way to being a successful exporter. And Shipping Solutions will be there with you every step of the way. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, we'd appreciate it if you'd like it and share it, and subscribe to our channel for more videos sharing real practical advice for exporters and importers. You'll also find hundreds of articles about every aspect of exporting at shippingsolutions.com slash blog. Check below for a link.